Hello, it's your friendly neighborhood host, uh, J.T. Wheatley, back for another episode of the History of Comics podcast. This time with another edition of the Classics with Daredevil, the Man Without Fear uh, miniseries. It was a five-part uh, limited series that launched uh, from uh, October 1993 and ended in February of 1994, written by Frank Miller and uh, penciled by John Romita Jr., and it's uh, basically a uh, reimagining of uh, Daredevil's origin, uh, updating it for modern times, a little more gritty origin. In many ways, it does what uh, Frank Miller did with Batman Year One back in 1986-87, and does that for Daredevil, a character in many ways he's almost considered like the second creator after Stan Lee and Bill Everett. Or I could really have to be honestly a third creator when you actually get down to that. But uh, yeah, he does a great job. He does reimagining the origin, showing his first uh, meeting with the love of his life, Electra. Also, you see the beginning of the rise of the Kingpin. Yeah, just a great uh, series all around. There's a great gritty style to it. And the, honestly, the best part, though, outside of Frank Miller's writing, is John Romita Jr.'s art because this is really where he truly blossomed as one of the best artists in the comic books then and even today. It has this great gritty style to it that. In many ways, it is, the best way I've always described John Romita Jr.'s art is, is, is Jack Kirby meets Frank Miller. It has that epic, uh, action-packed style of Kirby mixed with the grittiness of Frank Miller's penciling style. And this is, this is a perfect blend and uh, looks great. And it, it, it's never looked better and in this uh, series. That beginning and end was supposed to, interesting enough, supposed to start as just a regular trade paperback, but Frank Miller, the story expanded so much that, you, that uh, Romita Jr. found himself drawing a five-issue miniseries. So go figure, but it's a true classic reading to end, and it's one of the more influential comic stories that has since influenced a lot of other adaptations, most notably when he, don- he when it's done his, uh, now his first costume, that uh, black uh, costume with the black headband covering his eyes uh, that w- that uh, we started out hating in the beginning of the Netflix series, of uh, season one, but by the end we kind of loved it, though I still love that uh, new- the Daredevil costume he had in that uh, series too. But uh, yeah, overall, if you're looking for a great uh, telling of uh, Daredevil's origin, a little different from um, the previous Daredevil Yellow, but still great, more gritty, check out uh, Daredevil, The Man Without Fear, because that is a true classic. My name is Mark McCray, and I'm the author of The Best Saturdays of Our Lives. I'm Dan Klink, co-host of The Best Saturdays of Our Lives podcast. The Best Saturdays of Our Lives features programming trends from the 1966 television season all the way through the last era of the early digital age of the 1990s. On the show, if it's animated, we talk about it. Order your signed copy today at tbsool.com. And listen to the podcast at esonetwork.com and all podcast platforms. Now it's August 18th, 2021. Time for a little something a little different. My favorite comic book of Free Comic Book Day, and that will be The House of Slaughter by T- James Tynan IV and Warver de Adera. This is a great, this is one of the best things about Free Comic Book Day. It's designed to like give out the promotions for these new series people aren't checking out. And House of Slaughter is a tie-in to the uh, series uh, Something's Killing the Children by James Tynan IV. And uh, basically does a great job like giving you a taste of what this world is about. Like apparently it's about secret societies hunting down monsters. And it gets, and it's a little deeper than that. And basically, oh, this is interesting. It's a nice little intriguing mystery to it that Tynan sets forth. Plus, uh, Dordera has this nice, gritty art style that really brings you into it. Almost a uh, fairy tale but uh, creepy in like a grim fairy tale sort of way. But yeah, I mean, it's hard to go wrong with any comic book you get on a free comic book day because. Uh, my battle, like the paraphrase of my dad, the best kind of con- the, the best kind of beer is the free kind. The best kind of comic books are the free kind. So I, I can you say no to a good free comic book day. Hope everyone went out there and enjoyed, picked up some good free comic books, and of course uh, patronize your comic book store and uh, throw a little mo- actual money their way and sort of buy a new trade or something like that. And uh, in addition to uh, other comic book related uh, stuff, I, I, I'm kicking myself for not mentioning this last week, but I have to rave about the Suicide Squad movie that came out two weeks ago. Fantastic on every level. This is, a, I mean, it's an improvement on every level from the previous Suicide Squad film, and the fact it's actually an enjoyable movie. I've talked about before how the original Suicide Squad from 2016, I saw that at a charity screening associated with my comic book store in which the proceeds went to uh, the Wounded Warriors that, you know, basically money, the money went to helping vets uh, who are injured uh, defending our freedoms overseas. 
And I still wanted my money back after seeing that debacle of a film. It's just, I could not, there is no enjoyment of the movie at all. Whereas this, this Suicide Squad film by uh, James Gunn is brilliant, fantastic acting all around. Margot Robbie is really coming to her own with Harley Quinn at this point. And it's probably, I actually agree with a lot of what people are saying that she might be the best casting of a comic book character since Robert Downey Jr. in Iron Man, that she's that good and she's fantastic in this film. The entire cast is great. You know, I mean, of all people, the polka dot man nearly steals the show, but everyone is just just a crim de la crim of great actors. Naturally, Idris Elba oozes gravitas and brilliance as a blood sport, but he has a lot of fun. He brings he shows his comic chops too, especially when you find out what he's afraid of. It's hilarious. And even they go, uh, John Cena, shout out to my uh, friend over at Thunder Talk. Uh, he, John Cena is fantastic as Peacemaker. And it's a ton of fun all around. Yeah, so if you want to, if you have HBO Max, you have to check it out. And if you can get a chance to go to the movies, definitely watch it there too. It's a great time at the movies in general. Because, yeah, it's one of those movies that honestly, you want to see it in a theater with a crowd. Because you, you don't get the, the jokes just don't feel right without laughing with a bunch of people next to you. Hey, if you're vaccinated and you're masked up, go have fun. And also, for watching at home, uh, when this thing uh, drops, of course, the uh, season finale of uh, Superman and Lois just dropped. And I have to say, this might have just edged out Stargirl, my favorite new CW uh, DC show on. Just a great family drama mixed in with fantastic Superman action. And uh, don't want to give too much spoilers away, but it's a great ending you know, with all the right emotional heartbeats and the killer cliffhanger that shows that, hey, another DC superhero is going to be making the jump to CW. So, yeah, great show. Well, yeah, yeah. One thing, uh, well, definitely on CW, uh, they do DC. DC gets done pretty more or less right in the CW. So, yeah, definitely take those out. And with the Suicide Squad, they're getting the movies back on track, too. So, yeah, that's uh, it for this week. Uh, Join me again next week for what's likely another episode of the Classics. And until then, enjoy yourself a good comic book. And, of course, enjoy those free comics you got over free, free comic book day.